If your data doesn't follow a normal distribution, it's often possible to find a transformation of the data that does. A common set of transformations that statisticians like to use are the power transformations of the form I have written here. In a power transformation, you take your data, x, add a constant to it, which I've labeled as lambda 2, and then take the result and raise it to the power lambda 1. Often, if your data are all positive, lambda 2 can be set to 0, and you can just raise your data to a power. But if you have zeros or negative values, you may have to add something to it first. In stack graphics, the power transformations procedure will automatically find for you the best value of lambda 1. Now the advantage of doing this is that if we can find a transformation such that in the transformed metric the data are approximately normally distributed, then we can use any statistical procedure that would otherwise require our data to be normally distributed. And there are a lot of those and to be able to use them after transforming a set of data is a very powerful technique. To show you how stat graphics can find the best transformation for a set of data, I've loaded up a file called resistivity. This file contains the measured resistivity of a hundred electronic components. To show you that it's not a very normally distributed set of data, I'm going to go to the top menu to plot exploratory plots and show you the normal probability plot for this data. Putting in resistivity into the data field and pressing OK and taking the defaults, here's a picture of the normal probability plot for resistivity. This is a plot, incidentally, where if the data came from a normal distribution, the points should lie approximately along the straight line. That sort of behavior is indicative of a positively skewed distribution. You can also check out the summary statistics back here. The standardized skewness is 4.7, the standardized kurtosis is 3.6, both way out of range for data from a normal distribution. Now to find the best power transformation, I'll go to the top menu to describe numeric data power transformations. I'll give it resistivity as the data. And now you'll see it go to a Power Transformations Options dialog box. On this dialog box, I can specify a power and a shift, lambda 1 and lambda 2. I can also ask the procedure to optimize the value of lambda 1, which is what I'm going to do. But if I needed to shift the data so that all the values were positive, I could put in my own value for lambda 2. Taking the defaults and pressing OK, I'll now see a list of tables and graphs. I think I'll ask for the analysis summary, the normal probability plot, and the mean squared error comparison plot. When I press OK, the program will now automatically try a whole set of different powers to find the one that gives me the most normally distributed set of measurements. There's a number of things you can see on the screen here. First off, you can see the effect of the transformation on a normal probability plot. After we have taken resistivity and raised it to the minus 0.4 power, all the points fall very nicely on a straight line. That's a very, very good normalizing transformation. Back on the text pane, it shows you actually near the top what the optimal power is. And it's defined optimal as the power that optimizes what we call the Box-Cox transformation. Now the Box-Cox transformation is a little complicated, but essentially it just takes data raises it to a power after potentially adding a shift. It also throws in a normalizing constant so that the scale of the data stays the same. But the essence of the 
transformation is that it is a power transformation and for resistivity the best power is minus 0.4. Now you can also see on this screen a 95% confidence interval for the power. In this case the power, optimal power, is somewhere between minus 0.995 and positive 0.184. So based upon 100 observations, there's a little bit of uncertainty here about what the optimal power really would be if we took a very large sample from that distribution. You should also know that the value 0 is a very special number. Obviously, taking all the data and raising it to the 0 power doesn't seem to be a very sensible thing to do. In the class of power transformations, however, the value of lambda 1 equal to 0 is equivalent in the limit to taking a logarithm of the data. So in fact, since this interval covers 0, 0, the logarithmic transformation would also be reasonable. Although the best power right now, according to Box and Cox, is minus 0.4. Now, if you're not used to transforming data, you're probably a little uncomfortable by me telling you to take your measured resistivities and raise them to the minus 0.4 power. You'll probably say to me, Neil, that really doesn't mean anything, resistivity raised to the minus 0.4 power. And I'd agree with you. However, if you want to use a statistical procedure that assumes normality, it's a good normalizing transformation. What sorts of procedures are those? Well, one is the outlier identification procedure. Suppose I wanted to take my resistivity and find out whether there were any outliers present. If I just put in resistivity and ran the tests, they wouldn't work out right because the outlier identification procedure uses Grubbs test, which assumes the data are normally distributed. However, if I was to come in here and type resistivity raised to the minus 0.4 power, and press OK, accepting the defaults all the way in, then in fact I could believe the results of the tests because in fact the data in this transformed metric are at least approximately normally distributed. One more thing to see, if I go up to the analysis toolbar and press the tables and graphs button I can ask within the outlier identification procedure for summary statistics. Part of what this will display is the standardized skewness and the standardized kurtosis. You'll note that resistivity raised to the minus 0.4 power has brought both of those statistics well within the range of minus 2 to plus 2, implying that in that transformed metric, the data are in fact reasonably normally distributed.